Hello, Graphonatics! Is your server performance data getting lost in endless rows and columns, making it hard to know how close you are to blowing out or running out of resources? Then, Grafana's bar gauge is here to save the day. In today's video, I will show you how to use this powerful tool to visualize critical metrics, ensuring you stay within your desired ranges, all depicted with elegant bars. Let's get started! The Grafana Bar Gauge panel lets you easily visualize data ranges and thresholds using bars or sticks for each data element you query. This powerful visualization offers many cool customizations. You can change colors, labels, and ranges, and even choose retro LCD styles instead of regular bars. It's an awesome tool for analyzing KPIs, performance, and other metrics with important thresholds. Let's walk through the steps to create our first bar gauge, and then we will discuss the data needed to make it work. We will use Grafana Play to create our first bar gauge panel, but these steps work just as well in a local Grafana setup. To access Grafana Play, check the link in the corner. Grafana Play's home screen is a dashboard. Follow these steps to add a new panel. Now in the panel editor, set the visualization type to bar gauge from the dropdown in the top right corner. And that's it. You have your first bar gauge panel. Well, an empty panel. But no worries, we will work that in a bit. But first, in the main panel options section, you can quickly modify the bar gauge title, description, transparency, links, and repeat options. For now, we will just change the title to my first bar gauge. Sweet! Now back to this emptiness. We need to set the right data. We will be using the test data data source today. For more information about it, link in the corner. We will select the CSV file for the scenario and pick population by state as our dataset. Finally, you have your first and colorful bar gauges. But if those random numbers and bars don't make much sense, or if you see a blank panel, don't worry. Up next, we will drive into the data needs and possibilities for the bar gauge panel to ensure that you are getting the most out of this visualization. As mentioned earlier, a bar gauge panel can paint a gauge for every series, column, or row in your data. It can visualize every cell in the table returned by your query. To work with a bar gauge visualization, you need a dataset querying at least one numeric field, and every numeric field in the dataset will be displayed as a bar gauge. Text or time fields are required, but if they are present, they are used for labeling. To help you follow along, I have provided a set of CSVs in this video description. Ok, let's start by copying the first one and pasting it into the test data data source CSV content section. The pasted data has two rows, three numeric columns and one text column. Wow, <laughs> pasting it makes a lot of colorful bar gauges to appear instantly for each column. Here you may notice a few things. Only the last row is displayed, the text column is skipped, and the column titles are automatically displayed. Why is that? We will dive into the settings shortly to explain these behaviors. Meanwhile, another cool feature is that the panel automatically sets the maximum and minimum values of the gauges based on the highest and smallest number returned by your query. Now let's paste the next set of CSV values. The just one set. Again, available in the video description. Copying this set, you will see only one bar gauge. It's cleaner and easier to read, but it's empty? Well, that is because it only has one value. And remember, the panel detects max and minimum values from the query data. You can define them manually using a setting that we will explore in a moment. Next, let's paste the max min included dataset from the CSV again in the description below. Once pasted, you get the value correctly displayed from the first gauge but you also see the max and minimum values displayed. Not so cool, right? I don't want them in there. All these behaviors can be customized, so why don't we dive into those settings and clear up common questions such as why were only the last values displayed? Or where did the first ones go? Or how can you hide max and minimum values? 
and much more. Let's find out what these customizations are all about. First, let's copy and paste again the multi-row and column data sets to explore up better all the options. On the right side of the first item, we have all the general panel options common to almost all panels in Grafana. For now, I will just uh, change again the title to uh, Gauging Bars. Now in the value options, the first option is the Show. It allows us to change between displaying calculated or all values. So let's start with the easiest, all values. This tells the panel to display everything. As you can tell, the first row values have now appeared concatenated with the column name to distinguish them all. We also have more options like the display limit in case you have too many bar gauges. And under it, you can indicate if you want to display all the numeric values in the query, all the fields even if they are not gaugeable, like text or to display only one field. This is useful again if you have fields defining max and minimum but only want to display the one with the value of interest. Let's quickly bring back the max min uh, dataset and set the value. Nice! Okay, now that we have hidden the max and minimum, let's go back to the multiple data to keep moving. Now, going back the calculate show option lets you do calculations. By default, you have last, and that's why a moment ago, we only saw the last one by default. Here, you can select the first, maximums, averages, and all sorts of calculations. Then, similar to the all values, you can define what field to focus on. Moving on, the bar gauge options customize some gauge display settings, such as the orientation of the display, which by default is automatic, which does the same as vertical. But if you select horizontal, our values go from left to right. Cool! I like vertical, and it is the same as automatic. But before we switch back, we have the next setting, the display mode. This one is one of the coolest, as you can change the bars from the original gradients to basic plain color ones and LCDs. <laughs> I want them to keep them horizontal, as I think they look cooler when they are LCDs. But now we can go back to automatic orientation. And still, cool LCDs! I really like them! But to make it easier in this video, we will go back to gradient. You can also modify the value displays from the default color text according to the bar gauge thresholds. Plain or no values displayed. Well, I like colors. Okay, if you are in horizontal mode, you can change the placement of the name of each field automatic or on top, at the left of the bar gauges, or not to display them. If you are vertically displaying bars, you can only hide or show the names under the bars. If you have gradient or basic for the display mode, you can make the bars consume the whole space, which is by default, or move the numbers to where the bar appears. And the last option is to change the bar sizes, affecting their height and width if horizontal and only width if vertical. Now, in the legends section, you can add a legend to the bars. That is the text that appears below the visualization. You can have it as a list or as a table. Place it below the bars or on the right side. Change the width and select the values or calculations that you wish to display. Let's just deactivate them. The next settings are the text size, which is straightforward. You can affect the text size of the title under the bars and the values on top of them. Again, straightforward. Personally, I like them automatic, so we should let Grafana do the work, right? Now, in the standard options, you can change things like the unit of the value, being miles or kilometers or temperature or whatever. We have as well the minimum and maximum values. Here, in case you don't have them uh, or want to pull them from the query data, you can define them here, hard-coded. Again, leave them empty if you want them to automatically be defined from the values returned by your query. Speaking of automatic, if you have a list of values per field, you can also turn the field into calculation to pull them from each field set of values or columns and not the whole returns table. Lastly, you can set things like the number of decimals that you want, the title displayed under the gauge, the color scheme, and what to display when there are no values. And speaking of the color scheme, bar gauge colors displayed depend on the thresholds that you define in the last tab of the settings. 
And that is the bar gauge visualization. Clicking apply adds to your bar gauge panel. You can resize it in your dashboard or add other types of panels. If you want to learn more about other panels, check the videos on the screen. But today, you became an expert creating beautifully straight gauges. Happy dashboarding and have a good one!